Hello, this is the first section of HR for Unit 2 and we're looking at recruitment. Now there is a lot of crossover between this part of the course in Unit 2 and Unit 1 because essentially uh, the process that you need to go through regardless of whether you're a small business or a large business is going to be quite similar. Uh, there will be slight differences in terms of where you're advertising, um, and maybe in terms of the amount of applicants that you get um, but it's going to be very very similar but this is the only specification objective so it's a very straightforward area so I'm going to go through it quite quickly um, but again if you want to recap any of the parts in a little bit more detail you can always watch the unit one um, video so key terms recruitment is um, attracting people to apply for a job vacancy so to join an organization as a worker, a, a, an employee, a unit of labour, we'd say in economics. Uh, this is a, a very important area for most businesses and most businesses in the UK are service based and what that means is that the most um, the the biggest cost for most businesses is going to be their wages and salaries of their employees because most businesses are just the, the biggest part of the value to the business is their employees. Um, so it's very, very important to get this right. But here are a few reasons why. Recruiting the right people has a, an effect on the productivity. So this is looking at the unit cost or the average cost of producing um, a good or a service. So the more productive worker that you can get or the more productive your worker is, the more output they're going to produce. So that'll lower your average cost. They'll produce better quality. And when we think about quality, don't just think about the, the product itself and having fewer um, defects, but think about the customer service as well and the whole experience for the consumer. Um, the recruitment process is important because you want to make sure that you get people with the right experience. You might be recruiting um, for uh, one of your objectives. So just thinking back to when we did growth, think about those companies that take over other companies. Now they might not have, if it's not um, horizontal integration, they might not have anybody currently in the business that has any experience of operating another business. So if we're thinking about um, the example that I gave on one of the growth slides was a coffee roasting business. And if they were thinking of forwards vertical integration or vertical forwards integration, however you want to say it, and they were thinking about buying um, a chain of coffee stores, think about Costa or Nero or Starbucks, do they have any experience of running these big retail stores and little cafes um, that they have on the high streets, on most high streets in the UK? So they might need to recruit the right people because they're moving into a new area, they're, di they're diversifying and they need someone with the right experience to help them. Again, the same could be said for skills as well. You want to make sure that you've got people with the knowledge of the, the job that they're meant to be doing. And having the right people, attracting the right people to the job, being able to recruit the right people means high retention. That means that people stay loyal to your business, not in terms of customers, but in terms of the employees. Because if somebody is very unhappy in their job, if they don't feel like they can do it, if they're not the right person for the job, the likelihood is that they'll get so unhappy that they will eventually leave. And then you have to go through this whole process again. So we want high retention. We want to keep the employees happy and working for the business for a long, long time. And probably before somebody decides to leave, their um, absenteeism rate increases. So absenteeism is the amount of time that they have off work. So unhappy people, you know, it, it if they have a, even like the slightest cold, maybe something that if they really loved the job, they'd, they'd kind of work through. If you're really unhappy about the job and you don't enjoy it, you're just going to think, oh, stuff it, I've got a cold, I'm going to stay off for the day. So you get tend to find very high rates of absenteeism when, um, when people are unhappy in their job. And if they're not the right person for the job and they don't feel like they can perform very well, they're not going to be happy in their job. So it's really, really important and especially important for service industries or where a business relies on good customer service. So here are a few key terms. A lot of these we went through in the other presentation, but job analysis is something new that I've added. So this is identifying the tasks and skills needed to perform a job well. So basically, before you go to adverts, before you advertise for a vacancy, 
you've got to be very very clear about what that job actually entails because you're going to get people inquiring you're going to get people coming to interview and you've got to ask them questions to see if they could cope with the job so you've got to know what that job is and especially if you're a growing business you might be recruiting somebody for a job that has never existed in the business before as well so you've got to be very clear with people what the job actually entails so once you've decided what it entails or investigated what it actually entails you can write a job description so this is a list of the key information about the job the duties responsibilities hours location pay training provided um, and the person specification which is a list of the key skills and experience that the ideal candidate will have now here is my example I think I actually got this out of an old business studies textbook and this is a job description and person specification for um, a cabin crew job uh, as we can see there and they have all the basic information on and then on the person specification they have the um, skills and qualifications needed and they usually set it out in this way with the the letters e and d saying what's essential and what's desirable so if you don't have those well i think you need to work well in a team if you're a cabin crew member but um, if you don't have that skill you can still apply for the job um but that is something that they're they're really looking for whereas if you didn't have these things these essential things you, there's probably little point in putting forward an application because they probably um, wouldn't invite you to interview um, but the, that's, these are often really really helpful to see if you're the right person for a job and to, to really f see what the organization is looking for in a person okay so my computer oh, just froze then <laughs> sorry about that right um, this is a bit of a recap as well from unit one um, which is about when you recruit somebody for a new job um, should you use internal recruitment which is offering someone who's already working in the organization a promotion or should you use external recruitment there's an advantages and disadvantages of each so the advantages of internal recruitment are here so the business already knows the worker so they know their strengths and weaknesses and the skills and they know whether they're going to be good for the job um, on the whole they'll know whether being good for the job if the person going from promotion they won't have done the job before but they should know their general skills and ability um, there'll be less need for induction training that's going to be in um, a follow-up video we're going to look at training and training can be very expensive as well um, and they, they probably would need a, a shorter induction period as well so they would probably be a lot more productive sooner on um, than somebody who's joining from outside the organization so ex an external recruit um, if you are just offering the job internally you don't need to advertise externally and therefore um, it can reduce your costs because advertising externally can be expensive and the opportunity of being promoted could be very motivational for that employee themselves but also other employees as well if they see other people having um, career progression prospects they might think you know this is a good organization to work for um, because there are benefits from working here uh, longer from working harder I might be able to get a higher up job with more responsibility better pay so on so on so it can be motivational not just for the person that gets the job but for other people around them however externally hired employees can add new experiences especially you know linking back to that um, takeovers and inorganic growth when you're diversifying into new markets or it could be organic growth as well diversifying into new markets you might need somebody who has particular skills in the Chinese market and they know about how to sell to um, Chinese department stores or something um, and you might not be able to get that skill within your business already from the people that already work there um, there's going to be a larger pool of potential applicants because there's more people in the world than there are just in one organization um, one of the problems with internal uh, recruitment is if you promote somebody it does create another vacancy so you have to go through the recruitment process again and um, an externally recruited person might find it easier to do the job because they don't have to manage um, people that they've worked with before and been on the same level as so we'd call them their peers um, but I think it might be a bit awkward for an internal uh, person that's been recruited but if somebody that's been promoted should be able to deal with that however hard it is um, so I'd say that that's less 
um, of a reason this last one but it can be it can be awkward for people and here are some methods of advertising job vacancies so here we have a job vacancy advertised for subway so that is um, an advert that's appeared in a local paper um, uh, here, uh, this picture is meant to represent local papers, national papers as well, advertise jobs, but they tend to be very high up jobs. Got the Job Center, and they have a website as well um, that you can look on. Um, we've got special job uh, websites these days. Monster.com is a job website where they advertise vacancies. Um, and then here is a kind of careers fair that uh, if you go to university, or um, even if you don't go to university, there's, there's lots of careers fairs that happen for uh, 16 year olds and for 18 year olds as well and here they're, they're trying to recruit people to their businesses so we can see Google they're trying to recruit I certainly went to lots of careers fairs when I um, had finished university and met lots of different companies because um, I used to work as a management consultant before I became a teacher and I you know they go and meet all the companies and they give you lots of information about their jobs so those are some ways to recruit people some of my animation I've not <laughs> um, made sure that this was working properly so the key stages of recruiting a person you need to write the job description write the person specification and then we need to advertise the job vacancy with all the essential details there was a past paper question actually um, based on a job advert and what made it appropriate and what made it inappropriate so we need the business name what the role is locations duty possibly pay not every advert contains pay but possibly pay any other benefits any fringe benefits you might want to put in there and how the person should apply for the job very very important because you want people to apply and then you need to shortlist the candidates so um, you might ask them in the vacancy to fill in an application form or send in a CV um, or uh, in America they call them res resumes um, and you may also get personal recommendations from somebody um, somebody that used to work with somebody who knows somebody good that kind of thing happens a lot in business so you're going to get lots of people applying but you're not going to be able to interview them all and some people that apply you, you might already know they're not suitable for the job so you're just going to kind of create a short list which is um the the just a list of the people that you're going to bring to interview and the last stage is going to be an interview possibly even some testing um maybe some kind of like a team building task i know when i was a management consultant to get that job we had to do a funny kind of team building logic test working with other people i had to give a presentation i had to write a report um and have i think three other interviews as well so it's very intensive kind of interview um and selection process but that's what they do to make sure they get the right people for the job and that's it for uh, unit two for describing the process that businesses use to recruit and select new employees